Welcome to Korea and the World, a podcast on political, economic, and social issues from the perspective of the Korean Peninsula. According to the National Statistical Office, South Korea will become a hyper-aged society by 2025. The speed at which this demographic transition is occurring is already having major economic and social repercussions, which are bound to worsen in the coming decades. Issues such as the funding of pension liabilities, pushing back the mandatory retirement age, incentivizing companies to retain their older workers, and dealing with the ever-increasing elderly population living below the poverty line are already on top of the political agenda. Population aging is a very difficult topic to apprehend because it encompasses both philosophical aspects, such as the idea of solidarity between generations, and complex technical issues, for instance, the arcanes of pension finance. We were very lucky to interview for this episode an expert with almost two decades of both research and practical experience in the field, Dr. Pang Hannam. Dr. Pang is the president of the Korea Labor Institute and the Korea Pension Association. He is also professor at Yonsei University and was Minister for Employment and Labor between March 2013 and July 2014 under current president Park geun In his former capacity as senior research fellow at the Korea Labor Institute, he authored several academic papers on demographic trends and pension systems in South Korea and the region, with a focus on old age income security and productivity issues. After completing his BA at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies and earning an MA in Sociology from Vanderbilt University, Dr. Pang completed his PhD at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Mr. Pang, welcome to the podcast. How did you become interested in demographic issues and the pension system in particular? It was when I was uh, doing my PhD at University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I was in sociology major, and uh, within sociology, I was specializing in demography and, and labor market and uh, social economics. My undergrad background was humanities, but when I was doing my master's in Vanderbilt University, my ma- major concerns or interest was in economic sociology and economic sociology mm. is sort of closely linked to demography factors because it is kind of very important factor for labor market supply and demand factors like so my uh, specialty was sort of a mix of sociology economics and demography and i found that coming back to my country the demographic issue is one of the uh, main issues that have to be tackled and addressed mm. in terms of social policy and labor market policies. You are the president of the Korea Labor Institute. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our listeners in a nutshell what the institute does? What is the mission? Uh, It starts in 1988 uh, when Korean society was, was, you know, has experiencing uh, extreme uh, unstable industrial relations and also, you know, outbreak of social democracy Mm. uh, demands from uh, civil society. The government thought that we need government think tank that addresses those uh, important industry relation issues on labor market employment issues and was founded in 1988. And KLI has its you know, main uh, research areas. It has industrial relations and the labor market and employment structure and also social policy like pensions and retirement. Mm and uh, employment welfare mix. You were Minister of Employment and Labor uh, between 2013 and 2014 mm-hmm. under the current president, Park geun How important did you feel were these issues, demographic issues and pension issues uh, in the government's agenda? And did you find the president um, to be receptive to these issues? Korea is undergoing population aging for a long, long time and will be turned into, you know, hyper-aged society in mm. the coming uh, 10, 15 years. So population aging and also low fertility was the uh, ongoing issues that governments, after governments, have to deal with. Mm. And uh, in this Park Geun-hye government also took that issue seriously. And uh, one of the major first laws that Minister of Employment and Labor was pushing uh, forward was uh, extension of retirement age mm. to age 60 because before that there was no minimum retirement age age six, 60 so it's, 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 it, will, it will be effective from next year 
Korea's population is aging rapidly. You just mm -hmm. spoke of hyper aging. Looking at current projections, would you say the country is heading into a crisis? And if yes, what kind of issues are connected with this crisis? The uh, Asian four tigers, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, mm -hmm. and Taiwan and Korea have the same problem of rapid population aging. Obviously, population aging has to do with uh, decreasing economic growth and also welfare costs rising. It depends on scholars' views, but uh, some scholars are concerned about productivity decrease because mm -hmm. composition of labor force and population getting old. And some believe that aging is negatively related to productivity, but it's, it, it depends on you know, empirical examination. I mean, it, it's kind of theoretical level assumptions, but have to anyway concerned about that. Hmm. The, I think for Western audiences, when we speak of aging in Asia, people think immediately of Japan, mm -hmm. which is arguably the most widely known case of a right, yes. demographic crisis. And would you say that Korea um, will have the, exactly the same magnitude of crisis as Japan? Or is it going to be not as bad, so to speak? You know, if you look at the figures and statistics, we exactly find that Korea is kind of following the steps of the Japanese by a 20 or 30 years time lag. And uh, Japan did their own uh, uh, measures and uh, policy alternatives to be pursued, but Korea doesn't have to take the same measures and same directions in policy mm. terms uh, because uh, Korean situation is much more you know, severe. Much more severe. Much more severe. Mm. The transition period from aging to aged population was you know, short compared to even Japan. That means we don't have too much time to, you know, set up or prepare the socio-economic systems and uh, economic productivity systems and uh, you know welfare systems and retirement systems. Hmm. So you only have 10 or 15 years that we can yeah, prepare for ourselves. Are there lessons to be learned from Japan? Or is Korea using Japan as a benchmark of what to do or maybe what to not do? Yeah, we, we look at the Japanese case, uh, what they did, and also their, their labor market trends and their uh, economic indicators and mm. uh, we try to learn positively from what they did. They were not so much you know active early preparing the aging population in terms of the old people's employment mm. uh, and also uh, retirement pensions. I think uh, Korean society have to do their best and more <laughs> to have uh, to more or better outcomes. What are the main factors that, is, that explain population aging? And is the decline in fertility the main factor there? The variable, fertility variable, is, is more important than mm. uh, mortality because uh, mortality is resilient to change. But fertility, you can kind of do something or intervene by policy interventions or policy alternatives so that we can improve fertility, low fertility, a little bit. Uh, as you look at the, uh, the uh, Nordic countries' case, somehow they succeeded, you know, raising up their low fertility by uh, adopting right uh, socioeconomic policies. You wrote in, in a paper in 2011 that Korean labor productivity will plateau by 2015, mm -hmm. but actually we're already there. So can you somehow raise labor productivity to compensate uh, for the decreasing population? Is that, is that an option? Yes, we have to. We have to. Uh, you know, raising productivity is one of the uh, most powerful response or alternative to population aging. You know, in terms of labor productivity, Korea is kind of stands in the middle uh, in OECD countries by individual levels. But if you look at hourly productivity, labor productivity, then uh, uh, Korea is just uh, lags far behind, you know, competitors. Mm because uh, Korea basically has long, long working hour systems in the labor market and one of the longest working hours uh, among OECD countries. And one thing that we have to do is uh, reduce working hours step by step and also we have to do our best to you know, increase you know, how to uh, reform you know, work organizations and work processes efficiently to raise up our productivity. 
otherwise domestically we might have a problem in you know work sharing mm. and also increasing uh, firm level productivity international mm. uh, trade uh, market so you think that productivity increase is possible and realistic because we uh, see yes, pos mm. possible mm. is realistic uh, actually this government is pursuing those policies working hours reduction reorganizing work organization work processes mm. at firm levels we might need to uh, invest in uh, you know old age workers so that their productivity doesn't uh, decrease as they are getting old mm. so that they stay uh, competitive compared with their over the long term get long, over the long term mm. yes under the seniority wage systems is there any way that population aging can also have positive aspects on the country, economically speaking? Maybe is it good for consumption? Is there anything positive we can get out of this? Yeah, I think so. There is always always alternative uh, way to cope with you know demographic challenges and economic crisis. If you look at Western European countries that already uh, had experienced demographic change and population aging. They succeeded in coping with, you know, changing population structure, also the productivity issues. Hmm. And w even if the population gets old, there is another side that is demand for aging population friendly industries. Elderly care. Elderly mm -hmm. cares and long term cares, the uh, medical sectors and also markets that helps old age population to have a comfortable life at home and work. And also we need you know, reform or uh, make better uh, working conditions so that the uh, aging labor force can work productively and safely. So there is always a demand. Mm -hmm. If there is a change, there is another demand side, positive effect that another new industry is coming up and new uh, job opportunities are made. A new type of economy. New type of economy yeah. is also emerging. When we talk of demographic challenges, the main issue is always retirement and welfare. Mm -hmm. So before we speak about specific issues, can you maybe uh, describe for our listeners how the Korean retirement system works? Um, are there public and private schemes? Do they work in complementarity with each other? Is it mandatory? Maybe give us a little brush up. Korea has uh, public pension, first tier pension schemes. It's mandatory social insurance scheme and also has uh, form level uh, retirement pension benefits, mm. which is uh, also mandatory. And uh, employers have to contribute their employees' retirement pension account. It's uh, about 8.3%. One month salary for each year's tenure. Mm. And what about workers who are part-time or who are you know, in more precarious contracts? Are they also covered? Basically, it's just a prorata system. So if part-time... It's basically on your payroll, so about 8.3% of his payroll or her payroll is reserved for retirement benefits, hmm. and it's mandatory. And uh, 2005, new system was in introduced, which is a retirement pension system. Basically, it's, it's about the, uh, you know, after retirement income guarantee. Mm -hmm purchase uh, all the system, which is retirement benefit, which was basically lump sum payment each time that employee leaves their firm. So we thought that those uh, older systems are not beneficial to workers' retirement income. So Korean government introduced retirement pension system. So From lump sum to defined payment. To, to an mm. annuity. Annuity, exactly. Mm. Annuities. Would you say that the retirement system uh, provides ret retirees with everything they need or enough, or does it still rely on additional support from the family? You know, there is also personal pension product in the market, mm. uh, which uh, you can get tax incentive on, on your plan that you buy from the market. So formally, it has uh, first tier public pension, second tier uh, retirement pension, and third tier personal pension schemes. But in terms of uh, adequacy and uh, conservation, uh, retirement pension systems are still suffering from, you know, uh, not many people, especially from uh, mid-sized firms, they are still staying with old schemes mm -hmm. and not turning into retirement pension schemes for after retirement incomes. And also personal uh, pension schemes, it's kind of, a, it's not making a 
big progress, mm. uh, very low market shares. So even though we have a three tier three pillars, uh, schemes, yeah. but not enough people are under the under the schemes, the protection mm. under schemes, and we have to ways to go for in terms of a second tier retirement pension schemes mm. and also personal schemes. We have to yeah, boost up people or induce people to be more prepared for themselves. And above, public pension scheme is just for basic uh, old age income. Speaking of, of personal plans, the CEO of Prudential Asia delivered a speech in 2014 in Seoul and um, he called for a second miracle on the Han. You know, the, mm. the Korean economic miracle is called the miracle on the Han. He was, uh-huh. he was saying there is a second miracle needed, which is to reform the Korean welfare and retirement system because there was not much foresight and there's a lot of insurance illiteracy among the general public. Mm-hmm. People do not know that they should uh, maybe focus more on retirement. And so looking at some numbers about Korea, half the population of uh, over 65 lives under the poverty line. Um, you can see elderly people on the streets of Seoul collecting cardboards, all the recyclables to make ends meet. Uh, elderly suicide rates are actually extremely high. So would you agree with this assessment that Korea needs this this second miracle on the Han? Because otherwise, all the people who worked so hard to you know make Korea such a great country in the end just fall into poverty before they die. Mm. They die. Mm. Yeah, it's one of, one of the uh, dark side of Korean society. While she's you know facing population aging. In the midst of uh, her, you know, pension systems, uh, you know, benefit levels is not so adequate compared to other international standards. Mm. And one of the major cause or reason that old age people have to turn, you know, their own work or other self-help mm. you know, efforts is because it's the Korean pension system is not mature. As I said, other, you know, private mm. plans not so much widespread. Yeah, I... I to some extent, I agree. We need very long-term view and systematic uh, reform in terms of employment structure and also pension uh, systems. Hmm. Because employment structure, employment opportunity, and also which also relate to retirement s- systems hmm. has close uh, related to you know uh, individuals uh, or society's retirement income schemes. Hmm. Yeah, those are closely related. So one important thing is that Korean workers' working life is so short. Uh, They enter the labor market late and they have to leave their main jobs early because of the uh, the Korean firms, conventional retirement schemes. They require people early before 60 Mm. and they don't have enough time to prepare that old age life. And uh, society-wise, it means that Less and less people can contribute to public pensions or mm. retirement pension schemes. So Korean society and economy don't have much time to, you know, reform those employment structures and also pension systems. Because of that, we uh, we passed the, uh, you know, age 60 uh, mm. mandatory retirement law uh, last year when I was in the position. That's the first step. And also in terms of, you know, employment, we have to... Uh, reform the wage systems because the Korean wage systems basically based on short working life in the uh, developing economy stage, which means 55 or 50 years old, they just have to quit. And uh, because of the short working hours, the wage systems were uh, wage age profile was stiffly designed, and uh, one of the main uh, labor market reform issues with uh, current government is how to reform uh, wage structures so that uh, people can work longer mm. in their you know main lifetime jobs until 60 or even to 65 as in Korean society population getting older and older. President Park Geun-hye was elected on a platform to provide pension increases for the elderly which obviously extremely is extremely difficult to deliver and hasn't been done um, mm-hmm. so far. So assuming that the political will is still there, um, do you think that the inability to deliver this promise is the sign that maybe financially it's it's not possible for Korea to stomach this at this time? Is is that a fair assessment? Yes, the Park Geun-hye government decided to pay uh, basically basic uh, old age pension, basic pensions, the given amount is absolute amount, not rate 
to old people whose income in the, within the category of 70% or 80% in, in their population. Mm-hmm. Some argue that have to be 100%. Everybody uh, should be entitled to a basic uh, library pensions. But that's, that's the uh, future task that have to solve. But I think that helps a little, not much, mm-hmm. because that helps, you know, the uh, old people who are really in the borderline of, you know, poverty, they can, some extent, they can just uh, get out of the poverty uh, traps. Mm-hmm. And in terms of society-wide, that, that's the, uh, the part, objective, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. effect- effectiveness that the pension, basic library pension aims. But we, we can say it's enough. Mm. Uh, what you have to do is just reform, you know, public pension, national pension schemes, so that the adequacy of pension benefits and also the financial liability of pension benefits, public pension systems, go together. Mm. So that uh, we, we cannot give up any one of those. The adequate old age pension benefits are also important, but also we have to secure a financial soundness mm. of the public pension. So the basic you know, conflict and struggle uh, surrounding the public pension schemes in Korean society, uh, politically and socially, uh, basically is an issue about the adequacy and financial sustainability. Hmm. So I have to, we have to find, try to find out, balance the right solution between those two goals to improve Korean old age people's you know, wealth and uh, healthy life. Hmm. You spoke of financial sustainability. Um, there was a report written by, for the OECD about the national pension scheme. And the report was saying in a sense that the situation is quite troublesome and that the NPS will likely face financial trouble mm-hmm. um, in the near future. So why is the NPS in such a difficult situation and what do you think can be done? And do you agree with the OECD's assessment that the NPS will be in a financially difficult situation uh, in the next few years? Yeah, the assessment of uh, Korean public pensions financial status doesn't much different between you know domestic scholars and mm. OECD scholars. It's only a matter of degree, mm. I guess. Now, one, one basic challenge is that public pension is facing, is always there, you know, the Korean public pension system is based on, you know, uh, funding systems, not the uh, pay-as-go systems. Mm. That's the goodness of the public Korean public pension, because it, it, it saves for future liability and benefits that might have to be mm. paid. But basically, Korean population's aging speed is so, you know, so fast. Right, yeah. Uh, the funding systems might have to be turned into pay as go systems. Now it's, it's project to be 2060. In the past it was 2046, but the uh, benefits of cut and so the uh, deflation time period mm-hmm. extended them about 15 or 14 years, 16 years. The fundamental issues that have to be addressed is when Korea has to, Korean government and Korean society has to, you know, make the systems financially viable and sustainable, not the matter of 50 or 60 years mm. ago, or even 70 years after. The fundamental question is that when we have to convert, you know, we have to adjust the system to make the system financially, permanently, you know, you know sustainable which means that uh, do we have to raise contribution rate if then, you know, how much then when? Mm. And that issue is more fundamental issue than when the, uh, the you know, public pension uh, scheme will deplete or financially deplete mm. because it also relates to future generations, uh, you know, burden. I mean that these funding systems it's a matter of time. Will be, a, you know, converted, turned into pay as you go systems. So more hard question is, is I think, is that when the uh, public pension scheme will raise contribution rate, how much, when, and it's very politically sensitive issues, and it's also very difficult issue that publics can easily understand. Mm. So. 
but by system wise we have to address that experts policy experts or policy makers and also uh, administrators have to uh, take a take a stance and take a, you know brave stance in mm. terms of uh, to make the system permanently you know sound and viable is it difficult politically because in a way workers contributing to the pension scheme today are very likely to receive lower pensions or be forced to raise their contributions in the near future. Public pension schemes already, its benefits were cut down initially 70% of his or her you know, lifetime incomes down to 40% in coming future. And uh, we, we can ex- imagine that less than 40% acceptable to the old age people or any future generations mm. because uh, 40% is theoretical levels uh, replacement rate, but actually to have 40% replacement rate, you have to work 40 years, you have to contribute 40 years continuously. Mm. But by uh, many data statistics, we, we see that the average contribution period still uh, 25 years or so, so which means average workers only will have 25% of replacement rate public pensions when they retire. And it's basically, it's amongst only, you know, basic pensions in uh, Western standard. Mm. I don't think we can go further down less than 40%. And then what we have, to, we can do, I guess, to make systems viable and also to have old age incomes to be adequate mm. for this generation or the next generation. The only option is that what I see is that what kind of choice or what kind of decision we do about raising a contribution rate, how much, when. That's the only fundamental, ultimate decision mm. that any, in, in, in any time in the future, Korean society have to decide. Uh, one technical question regarding the national uh, pension scheme. 10% of its balance sheet, um, according to the law, should be uh, in alternative investments. And the characteristic of alternative investments is that they take bigger risks, hoping for higher returns, of course. Why is the NPS taking such risks? Uh, Isn't that quite dangerous, using public pension money uh, for such investments? And isn't it telling us that it is actually unsustainable? And so they're Mm -hmm. looking for ways to increase their revenues as much as they can, even if it means taking maybe too big a risk. Would you agree with that? Basically, I don't agree with that as Mm. a position and stance. I understand that because Korean pe- public pension schemes is funded systems, so we have uh, so far accumulated huge public pension fund, which I guess about 30% of GDP or 35%. It's, it's, it's supposed to increase up to 50% GDP in the future, coming future. Hmm. And imagine the uh, size of the fund, one uh, single fund uh, invest in domestic market if not the uh, foreign market. Hmm. It's a kind of a big elephant in small pond, <laughs> as experts told me. <laughs> you know, it's a huge influence in, in uh, related issues and uh, risks are already discussed and raised by the scholars, hmm. domestic scholars and, and, and foreign scholars. It's, it's a peril or risks that a public fund playing a big hand in small market, mm. relatively small financial market. And secondly, we talked a lot about the uh, role of uh, national pension funds uh, you know, in the financial market, or, uh, also the how to invest public fund mm. uh, socially acceptable and economically viable, product, yeah, product, yeah, productive. Yeah. productive. I don't think Korea has, Korean society has ever openly raised the issue and discussed or any you know, public consensus about mm. that. What the uh, public pension you know, corporation doing that just following the uh, principles of international standard and how funds should be invested and managed, which means that uh, stability and profitability. Mm. But those stands that you, you say is more biased toward profitability mm. in the expense of stability, exactly, stability yes, yeah. social ac- ac- mm. acceptability. So that, that's what I worry. So many people say that 
public pension fund should be managed in conservative in, in, in risk profile, con conser yeah. conservative yeah. risk profile, yeah. and also, if 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 possible, have to be neutral to market risks or market mm. you know portfolios, mm. which they term indexed investment, mm. so that the fund investment and growth can go with you know growth of the Korean economy or society. Mm. So they'll, I think, have to, you know, search or find some other socially acceptable alternative, also, also safe, safe way mm. to, you know, invest uh, that money. Invest mm. that money, mm. and I think there is more sound alternative ways that we can invest and manage our, our public pension fund. Mm. Going back to the uh, working uh, duration of Koreans, which you mentioned a lot. You wrote a paper in 2011 saying that the most common retirement age 10 years ago was 55 years old, which is mm -hmm. very young, as you mentioned. And only a minority of firms also, as you mentioned, uh, had said their mandatory retirement at age 60 or, or mm -hmm. older. Why did companies adopt such practices? What was the rationale behind it of, uh, well, asking a worker to leave <laughs> when he was still relatively young? Yeah, it's kind of a historical legacy mm -hmm. of... Korean organizations, firms, they were you know, working, operating in you know, developing economy states last 40, 40 or 50 years. And basically, in the demographic perspective, the uh, life expectancy, uh, say 1960, was only 60 years hmm. for Korean males. It says a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it explains a lot, yeah. So, yeah. The people sense or you know th thinking was basically fifty five is <laughs> it's socially acceptable retirement age then nobody raised a question about that mm. and also as I said because their working lifetime or their tenure with the organization forms is relatively short because a, they enter the labor market twenty five after graduation or mm. twenty around 30 years, they are economically active and and they make money. Mm. And the uh, wage systems was going with that uh, short working life. Mm. So wages increases was very steep with their age and their tenure with the organization. And that's still working in the labor market and Korean firms. So Korean firms are very reluctant to keep their old age workers up to age 60 or 65. That's one of the reasons, I guess. And also there is, uh, you know, the Korean baby boomers mm. who were born 1955 or 63. The huge baby boomers are in their early 50s and mid 50s. And there was a really tight competition mm. in terms of positions, in terms of promotions, in terms of, you know, job opportunities. And that also had negative effect on uh, early retirement age. And that's the real problem with our society. And the other way, just productivity. You know, in terms of work organizations and also especially white colors, Korean occupation or systems within the firm is kind of a hierarchical, very hierarchical. And there's one way, one dimensional hierarchical systems and in also it has, in terms of uh, positions available, as you, the uh, job ladders goes up, it decreases sharply like a pyramid. Mm. And with that system, you know, it's not easy to, you know, keep... The same amount yeah, of people. Yeah, all yeah. The, age, the, the employees getting old, you know, <laughs> the s same opportunities, mm. same, uh, you know, pay while the organization keeping, uh, keeping profitable. Mm. So you mentioned that it's important to keep um, uh, older employees uh, in work. Why is that actually desirable? And which policies could incentivize companies to keep older workers? We have to make a system, work life or work organization, work process system that we can, we can work at least productively until age 60. Hmm. Hopefully, 65 minimum. As I said, we have to, you know, reform our promotion systems, our retirement systems, and also pay systems within organizations or outside organizations, so that that 
more people can stay with their organization with forms productively hmm. until they get old, 60, 65. And then after they retire, they can turn into uh, their pension schemes so that they can you know, financially support them, themselves and their families. But currently, Korean conventional retirement plans at form levels uh, still stay with you know mid mid fifties hmm. and uh, that has to be very reluctant hmm. to you know extend that. Uh, why? Because the factors that I already mentioned. So we have to both you know cooperate so that we can have a new system so that we can uh, more evenly and more fairly many people can you know, work in the labor market. You wrote in 2011 that maybe subsidizing wages for older workers could be an idea. Do you still think that's a, that's a good idea? Is that financially sustainable? I think it's one of the uh, procedural measures until you know, new systems get in, uh, employment retirement schemes that you know settled in. Because one of the reasons that the uh, firms are sh- reluctant to you know, keep old age people is, is uh, because they're expensive, relatively expensive, compared to their productivity hmm. and also compared to jobs available so that the firms can offer to them. So very competitive. One thing that in terms of the policy interventions is support the uh, firms to some amount in terms of their labor cost so that they can, you know, keep all the peoples. And also, I think uh, the government just supports firms so that they can invest in old age workers, mm-hmm. you know, a human capital and a job, you know, ability, uh, so that they can stay productive. Um, so we've been talking about all the choices that must be made to mitigate the economic effects of aging. Mm-hmm. In European countries, um, their solution was to adopt immigration policies mm-hmm. to continue population growth. And then you have Japan, the exact opposite, where it seems that Japan would rather decline both demographically and economically mm-hmm. than have immigration. So which solution does South Korea favor uh, for the moment? Do you see Korea maybe resorting to more immigration in an attempt to offset uh, population decrease? You know, they have to. But currently, Korea is kind of much similar to Japanese uh, stance in terms of immigration policy, very you know, conservative. There are many factors behind that, but we don't have much time yeah. to explain. But one thing uh, the currently Korean government is adopting is a work permit system which foreign workers uh, get a work permit from Korean government and they can uh, work Korean labor markets up to almost five years mm. and mm. they can renew. And you think that would be a, a good thing in terms of funding pension liabilities? It's, it's not a, yeah. It doesn't, it's a matter of a good one. Uh, I think mm. it's because it's uh, Korea is just, you know, passing through industrial uh, structural change and there are some sectors or industry that the, the employers are suffering from workforce shortage mm. because there is a uh, lack of supply, whether it is young workers or old age workers or skilled workers. Mm. So the gap has to be filled. Mm. Filled, and currently is the portion allocated to you know foreign work permit workers. Mm. But it's not immigration policy. Do we have to seriously uh, think about immigrant policy? I think yes, because labor demand, you know, rapidly changing industrial structure and population, is also not only limited to manual low-skilled workers, Hmm. which under current work permit systems, most of them just manual workers. But Hmm. you know, global community, global economy, and IT, we Hmm. might need some skilled or special expertise workers from outside, from abroad. I guess same with other countries. So we might have to think seriously about gradually immigration policy to be adopted or to be devised uh, so that we can just successfully adapt to your labor shortage or population aging. Hmm. Looking again at Japan, uh, what Japan is trying is to have women participate more into the workforce as a, as a way again to deal with population aging. Um, do you think that better inclusion of women in the Korean workforce would help? And for how long is it obviously, the case? Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Korea might, in the future, 
may, may, may take time to full-scale you know, immigration policy. This is one of the reasons that the uh, woman female labor force participation is very relatively low compared mm. to Western countries. And so, which means that Korean labor market or Korean economy has a very well-educated, inactive female population so that they can just... It's just there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, coming, there. yeah. And, uh, and also, you know, in uh, aged population, aged society, and also in the software economy era, mm. we have to give chances to female workforce. Mm. And that's the secular trend also. There are increasing a number of young women just participating, pursuing their long-time career mm. compared to the past. They are mother generation, quite different generation. So including women in the workforce is one thing, but there's also the problem of natality. And you mentioned uh, Sweden, I think, before, Nordic countries. Uh, do you see Korea trying to benchmark Nordic countries um, in terms of extended parental leave for both parents, uh, widely available in expensive mm. daycare, uh, you know, making the idea of the working mom something that is socially acceptable? Is that something that you think Korea should really do? That's exactly mm. what we have to pursue mm. and we have to benchmark. Because as you see, the uh, Nordic countries, they had a period of uh, very low fertility. They adopted policies that, you know, help uh, married women, especially married women, to stay in the labor market and pursue their own careers, which was uh, the measures that you mentioned, mm -hmm. parental leave and, uh, and, you know, child care facilities and uh, also policies and, uh, you know, tax systems. Incentives. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, amenable to women's work. And also that policy and that, that labor market policy also helped their low fertility to be raised up gradually. What I know is that their low fertility, like uh, 1.34, mm. now raised up 1.7 or 8, like Sweden, mm. Norway. That's the uh, right way. And also Korea is just trying to you know, follow their steps. Mm. One very last question, Mr. Pam, to conclude. Now that you're not a member of the government anymore, maybe can you tell us, do you feel that Korean politics are, will find and enable the appropriate answers to Korea's democratic challenges? Because Korea, like many other countries, has you know, a very strong political polarity. And do you think that this can be overcome, that the right solutions can be found? Frankly speaking, you know, many economic social issues these days in Korean society, too much politicized. Mm. I understand that the uh, Korean party systems, you know, two opposition parties, and they're taking turns in terms of mm. governance and power. But the bad thing is that, wrong with that, many social issues that sh they should be addressed scientifically and neutral policy perspective, and also benchmarking foreign policies and, uh, you know, the... Uh, Operators, but some of the issues like current, you know, SC public pension, pension issues, and also daycare arrangement hmm. for women. These social economic issues are too much politicized. Hmm. So we find sometimes we find no no steps were taken just in the in the you know <laughs> term hmm. of political uh, debate and uh, opposition. Hmm. So I think of the future, uh, what you have to do is just Korean politics have uh, some kind of uh, steps back and look at the issues, whether it's a conservative or liberal, hmm. more neutrally, and uh, which means that economically, socially viable and acceptable. And that way, uh, there are many rooms that Korean politics can negotiate and cooperate if they need. That relates to, you know, very serious future issues like old age income and uh, income distribution and also many policies that helps Korean society to adapt to their rapid population aging. Mr. Pang, thank you so much for being our guest today. It's a great honor to have you. Thank you. This was Korea and the World. To make sure you don't miss our next episode, bookmark our website, koreaandtheworld.org, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.